Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Califf. Today I'd like to talk about doubly linked lists. So singly linked lists are great, but they do have some disadvantages. While they're good for many circumstances, some things really can't be done efficiently if our list is a singly linked list. And we may want to move forward or backward in the list, whereas as long as we have a singly linked list, we can only move forward from the beginning of the list toward the end. So we bring in a second link. This will make our node class look something like this. We'll still have data, of course, and we'll still have a next, but we'll add a prep. And this will be a link to the previous node in the list. So for the very first node in the list, it will be null, just like next is null for the very last node in the list then we'll have constructors similar to what we might have for a singly linked list node. So here's a picture of what a doubly linked list might look like if we drew it out. We have data here. We have our next pointers pointing to the next item, but we've added a prev field. Note that some people call this prev because it's an abbreviation for previous. And that is pointing at the previous node in the list. Note that with doubly linked lists, we almost always have a tail pointer. That's something we might have for a singly linked list, depending on what we're doing with the list. But for a doubly linked list, we'll almost always have some way to get to the last node in the list. And of course, the final node will have null for its next pointer. Similarly, the very first node has a null for its previous pointer. Advantages of doubly linked lists are pretty much I can go either direction in the list and easily keep up with both what's in front of me and what's behind me. And I can delete at the head or the tail efficiently. So with a singly linked list, we can easily delete at the head of the list. Very efficient. We can do that in constant time. But if we want to delete the last item in the list, even if we have that tail pointer, we have no way to get back to the previous item that we need to now make the end of the list without going to the very beginning of the list, back to head, and running a loop all the way through the list to get to the next to last item. On the other hand, we're going to see that with the doubly linked list, we can make that also a constant time operation because we have access to that previous node. There is a disadvantage to doubly linked lists as well which is basically just, I have more references to maintain. So anytime I'm going to make changes, I need to fix not only next, but also prep. So let's think about what that looks like in terms of insertion into the middle of a list. So let's assume that I want to insert a node after temp, so after the five. So I'm gonna create a node with the value eight, I'm going to make it point at temps next. So this is something that we would do if we were inserting in a singly linked list. But then I also need to make it point at temp with its prev pointer. Then of course I need to fix the pointers in the list already to include the eight. So I'm going to make temps next point at the new node as I always have but I also need to make sure I fix that next node's prev to point at the eight as well. So if we think about code for that, we're going to create the node, then fix the next pointer, fix the prev pointer for the insert node, make temp next point at this node as we always have, then we're also going to fix that previous pointer from the following node to be pointing back at insert node. Now note that I could do that a little bit differently. I could actually set up another variable for that following node. Um, so do something like node next node gets insert node dot next and then say, okay, next node's prev is going to get insert node. Either of those can work. You do want to be careful when you're chaining. If you do more than a couple, 
that can make things hard to follow, make your code confusing, and it can be easy to make mistakes. So I recommend don't be afraid to create variables to hang on to your nodes. So in doing this, we're really just adding a couple of things. We have to add the modification to make our prev point back at the previous node. And we need to make sure we make that following nodes prev point at us. Otherwise, this is the same as our simply linked version. Okay, I said I wanted to point out the simplicity of removing the last node here. So if we think about it, even with that tail pointer, if we wanted to remove the last node in a singly linked list, we would have to start at head and walk through with a loop, look at every one of these until we got to the one right before tail. Then we could actually do the removal, which would consist of making tail point at us and making our next be null. So if we do this with the doubly linked list, it's going to be similar, except that we already know where that previous node is. So we're simply going to say, hey, tail, go point at that node in front of you. And then, of course, fix the next. Now, in both of those cases, because we're in Java and we love garbage collection, we do not have to worry about the fact that this extra node is still there pointing back at us because Java will come pick it up. It's, it's not in use. Now, if we're in a language that doesn't have garbage collection, we would need to worry about um, getting that memory cleaned up. The code for removing that last item then becomes very, very simple here. We don't need that loop to go find it. We're just going to say, okay, tail, gets tail.prep. Now it's pointing at the right thing. And then tail.next gets null. These are the kinds of things where doubly linked lists really um, show us what they're worth. Removing from the middle note will have a slight added complexity. So if we take something out of the middle in a singly linked list, we just have one pointer to fix. We have to point fix that next. But with the doubly linked, we're going to have two pointers to fix. We're going to fix the next of the previous node, just like we do with our singly linked lists. But then we'll also have to fix the prev of that subsequent node. So we have the advantage we can get at these things more easily because our current node is pointing at both of them to start with when we find it. But we do have to make sure that we get all the pointers fixed. One positive thing with doubly linked lists, there are no changes to searching. So we can still just follow our loop, looking for what we're looking for, following our next pointers. That's not going to be any different. Though we actually do have one advantage with doubly linked lists. If we have reason to believe that our item is much closer to the end of the list than the beginning, we could theoretically search through the prev pointers from the back to the front. Overall, doubly linked lists are going to be more flexible than our singly linked lists. And for some tasks, they're going to clearly improve things, making them simpler, possibly making them quite a bit more efficient. They are going to use a little more memory. We have two references per node instead of just one. And they are going to add a little complexity to some tasks because we do need to always make sure we fix those prev pointers as well as our next pointers. So thanks for watching. I hope this has given you a little bit better sense of what doubly linked lists are all about so you can add them to your toolbox. See you next time.